Welcome, brothers and sisters, to a new edition of our show titled Speak of Africa. We thank you very much for the support you've been giving us. This show is really becoming popular because of your approval. We want to thank you sincerely. Without you, we will have no show. A few weeks ago, we spent much time discussing civil strife and conflict in Africa. Today, we're going to look at civil strife and conflict in Africa within the purview of US-African relations. The United States is the world's superpower. For so long, most Africans have been having a love affair with America. When I was a little boy, I had an American dream before I turned five. My parents bought a little toy projector for me, which I call Fine Country. While looking at Fine Country, I saw beautiful pictures of America. I saw pictures of New York City. At five years old, I told my parents, Daddy, Mommy, when I grow up, I want to go to America. And this was because even at the young age of five, I had already identified with American values. Today, most Africans identify with American values. American values are not just American values, they are human values. Which is why we tell our American politicians to pay special attention to the image of America in the world. In January, we were really disheartened when President Donald Trump was accused of using foul language to describe Africans in the United States. He referred to African countries as shithole countries. That was a terrible remark. We thought it really tarnishes the image of America in the whole world. And people love America. Even those who claim to be America's enemies, they love America because they know what America represents. America represents freedom. America represents what is beautiful about human beings. So, when we heard a few days ago that Rex Tillerson, the U.S. Secretary of State, is traveling to Africa on a mission, we were very, very happy because such a mission is going to become a mission of fence mending. When President Donald Trump made that remark against Africans, many African politicians were really angry. There was an uproar. So we are happy that Mr. Rex Tillerson, America's top diplomat, is going to be mending fences, trying to make sure that people are happy. So we really salute him. Besides, Mr. Tillerson also announced an aid package for some of the countries in Africa that are in civil strife and violent conflict, like Nigeria, Sudan, South Sudan, Djibouti. So we are really happy that he's going to be taking some aid over there. But the aid is not really what really interests us. What really interests us is the transfer of American values to this part of the world. So we are really happy that for a change, China is going to be challenged. We think America has been ignoring China for too long. So that was wrong. If we're going to have another American century, we need to have America engage the people of Africa. Africa is the last frontier of capitalism. Almost all over the world, capitalism has taken root. So Africa has a fertile ground where American capitalism needs to take root. And we are challenging American politicians to make an effort to engage Africa positively. Why is China spending so much time in Africa? Africans do not identify with China. I was very, very happy when I listened to Mr. Rex Tillerson criticizing China for the first time openly. He was really telling the truth. China engages in big capital intensive programs in Africa, but those programs do not really help the average African. Even as I read the book of Dambisi Moyo, an African economist, Dead Aid, Dead Aid is the title of the book written by economist Dambisi Moyo. This book is very popular already in Africa and all over the world because it tells the truth about the African condition. 
Africa does not just need aid. Africa needs American values. So we need a leader who can really show Africans that they really appreciate Africans' appreciation of America. Which is why we are really celebrating the news that Mr. Rex Tillerson is going to Africa this week. So that's great. The critique of China was really so searching and we are happy with that critique. China is not really a good country. China is not really a friend to Africa. What China is doing is to create dependency. Africans are borrowing a lot of money from China. When are they going to reimburse? When, when are they going to pay back this money? Never. The amounts are so astronomical, we don't even know when we're going to be able to pay this money back. Perhaps even our children will not even be able to pay this money back. So dependency was the first fault of the Sino-African relationship. Next is debt growing. Most African countries are owing China so much money, so the debt is just so much. Third is dictatorship. China is talking about progress, but China is a dictatorship. When you have a dictatorship, there's no way that you can build lasting institutions. Dictatorship is what is wrong with the Sino-African relationship. So we prefer Africans to emulate America, a land where there is democracy. So if we can emulate America, then we'll be fine. Finally, the Sino-African relationship is marked by exploitation. China is bringing employees from China to work in African countries. We would have preferred projects where the countries are employing their own citizens to do their work. China is solving their unemployment problem by bringing people to Africa. Why can we not get Africans to work on Chinese projects? Why must we get Chinese to come to Africa to build roads? Africa has so many people who are capable. We have a lot of engineers. So we prefer that these engineers should actually be the ones doing the construction. If we let China impose their will on us, that's another form of exploitation. They're taking all the minerals, they're involved in capital intensive projects. What we prefer are labor intensive projects. Labor is what Africa has in much supply. Let us engage our own people, the youth are running to foreign lands in search of greener pastures. We want our young people to stay at home to work for their countries. Look at America. Few Americans want to travel abroad. They love their country. We want to have the same kind of system, and which is why we're craving for the reassertion of American values of freedom in Africa. The reassertion of American values of freedom should be the national interest of the United States. In so many places in Africa today, there is civil strife and violent conflict. We think America as a superpower can really come in and try to help us to assuage the chances of conflict. Okay, instead of just letting the French run afoul with their funny ways, America can really be a partner for peace in Africa. That should be the national interest of the United States. Instead of wasting a lot of money trying to support terror fighting campaigns, America needs to engage the civil society in Africa so that the people know that it is in the interest of the Africans and Americans at the same time to have a free society. Similarly, when we have an economy that is flourishing, America should partner with Africans to really do business. America should serve like a big brother. Do not let China come in and take it all. Do not let Russia come and make a mess of Africa. We are challenging America to rise. We want a second American century. When America is the world's policeman, there is peace in the world. And we want the status quo to remain the same. America must remain the leader of the whole world. We don't want China to come to Africa and impose dictatorship. We don't want Russia to come to Africa and impose dictatorship. 
We want to maintain the hegemony of the United States all over the world. We are longing for a second century of American supremacy. And we're telling our people that we want America to work with us to establish institutions where we can have freedom. When there is freedom, we will be able to set up systems that are similar to what obtains in the United States politically. At the same time, we want it to make it easy to establish businesses in Africa. America is the citadel of capitalism. So let America help African countries to build economic systems that are productive. These economic systems need to resemble what obtains in Israel. We don't just want America to give Africans a handout because aid is dead. Aid does not really help Africans. Much of the money that Africans receive as aid is siphoned into the pockets of dairy politicians. They steal the money and put this money in rogue countries like Switzerland and France. So we want America to engage Africans so that they can transform their countries into oases of prosperity. If this happens, we will have a reassertion of American values all over the world, which is why we're really happy with the peacemaking mission of Secretary of State Rex Tillerson. Next, we're going to move our show now to Cameroon. Cameroon is a country that is really on fire. When I look at what is happening in Cameroon today, it reminds me of the Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer. A few weeks ago, there was a ministerial cabinet reshuffle in Cameroon. When this happens, Cameroonians are happy and some are sad. This is because whenever there is a ministerial cabinet reshuffle, there are winners and there are losers. For the 2018 cabinet reshuffle, the main four winners are Paul Atanga Nji, second, Pauline Nalova Lyonga Egbe, third, Joseph Dion Ngute, fourth, Paul Tasson. What about the losers? Well, there are three main losers in this cabinet reshuffle. The three main losers are Edgar Allen Mebe Ngo. The second loser is Martin Belinga Ebutu. The third loser, and perhaps most important, is the Cameroonian people, the Francophones and the Anglophones. When we saw this event, we were really saddened for the people because they are the ones bearing the brunt of the poverty, the hardship. So let me look at the winners. Paul Atanganji was nominated by President Paul Bia to become the Minister of Interior, what they call the Minister of Territorial Administration. Paul Atanganji is actually Mr. Paul Bia's hatchet man. We've done a lot of research on this individual and we found out that he is actually a petty thief. He's not really qualified to be a, a Secretary of State in charge of the interior. But his choice is compensation for the daily job he's been doing for the Cameroonian dictator called Paul Bia. We understand that Atanganji's career started more like an informant. He spent time making stories about people. Atanganji was actually a court jester. He spends a lot of time telling jokes to President Paul Bia about Nijon Frundi. And President Paul Bia will sit with his wife and laugh at the calamity of Nijon Frundi. So Atanganji made a career out of looking for ways to wage a proxy war for President Paul Bia. As a hatchet man, President Paul Bia rewarded him with what in Cameroon is perceived to be a very big post. So now, Paul Atanganji would be in control of all the governors, all the, the district officers, the senior district officers. For the people of Anglophone region, I feel sad because Atanganji is going to become their killer. So President Paul Bia has chosen their own brother to come and kill them with ease. So instead of them worrying about Francophones killing them, now their own brother is going to be the one who will be killing them in cold blood. So when you look at pictures of Atanganji on 
YouTube and social media. He wears the uniform of uh, the CPD and party and he's very, very happy to be Bia's uh, dairy boy. He does all the dairy work that Bia has to do. So we really feel sorry for the people of Anglophone Cameroon. So the nomination of Atanganji is actually window dressing. It is not really a victory for Anglophone Cameroonians. Those who have been thinking that by appointing Atanganji, President Paul Bia is showing that he is making amends with Anglophones is a lie. The truth is, President Paul Bia is rewarding a guy who takes pleasure in inflicting pain on his own people. So now, Paul Atanganji is going to have free reign to kill more people in Anglophone Cameroon. So his house is well cut out for him. The terrain is not going to be easy. If before he thought he could really challenge Frundi, now he will be fighting the whole people. He's not just going to be fighting one individual. So Atanganji better watch out because the people are going to come after him. They're not going to sit and watch him kill them in cold blood. They're going to be fighting back. So he better be forewarned. Next, the winner is Pauline Nalova Leonga Egbe. I think I know this individual because this individual was actually my teacher at the University of Yaoundé. I had my first degree in 1982 and Mrs. Egbe was my teacher. She taught me Afro-American literature. She was a great teacher, but in the manner of Geoffrey Chaucer, I would have a lot of irony <laughs> to express. Out of 10 sessions, she came to class maybe twice. Most of the time she had a call, she would not even come to class. So I don't know how many times she, she's going to be able to come to the office as Minister of Secondary Education. So when I see her talk about uh, fighting corruption, Paul Bia would never nominate anybody who is not corrupt. Because Cameroon is a kleptocracy. It's a government for thieves. Paul Bia himself is the Alibaba of the 40 thieves. So whenever he nominates somebody, you have to understand that this person is doing terrible things to his own people. These people are not going to be doing anything to help the Cameroonian people. They're just going to be doing things to serve the interests of Paul Bia. Next is Joseph Dion Gute. Most people know Joseph Dion Gute as the former director of uh, ENAM which is the School of uh, Magistracy and Administration. This school actually is a training ground for thieves. As administrators of Cameroon, these people collect the taxes and they administer different areas of the country. In Cameroon, if you want to get rich off public funds, you have to go to ENAM, the School of Magistracy. Once you go to the School of Magistracy, you can become a treasurer or you can become an administrator. Any of these two positions opens doors to wild dreams of riches. And this is why you see most people admire people who go to Enam. Enam is what they call Grand Ecole, but I don't see what is really grand about studies in Enam. When you leave Enam, then you become a thief for life. So that's where Joseph John Gute left, and now they have placed him in the presidency. The last winner is Paul Tasson, who hails from the Lebia Lem area of Cameroon. We know some friends who know him very well, but we don't want to personalize these appointments. With time, we're going to give you more information about who these people are. But it suffices for you to understand that they are not really helping the Cameroonian people, which is why we say the Cameroonian people are the losers during this cabinet reshuffle. Edgar Allen Mebengo, he used to be the Minister of Defense. Later, he was moved to transport. But he was disgraced this time. After all the scandals, it looks like Paul Bia was tired of having this pal in government. Next, the unlikely dropout of Martin Belinga Ebutu was really shocking to many Cameroonians because to, this guy was really perceived to be President Paul Bia's uh, hatchet man, the brain, he did everything just to help the president. So when they drop him out, now we see pictures in social media showing Belinga Ebutu as a beggar with a, a pan in his hand begging for money. So we don't know, but we hear that it looks like Mebengo may be going to jail. Because what Paul Bia does normally is when you fall out of favor and he wants to penalize you, he sends you to Kondengi, which is a prison in the center of uh, Yaoundé, in a, a poor neighborhood. So he sends you there to make you suffer. 
Actually, Mr. Paul Bia is a masochistic leader. He enjoys making his enemies feel pain. So when we see a Christian doing stuff like this, we ask ourselves what is really happening and we really feel sorry for the victims of Mr. Paul Bia. When you look at Kondengi, the prison is filled with a lot of his enemies. Even when we, we look at some of uh, the guys, like today, we just got news that Camtel, Cameroon Telecommunications Network, which has really been the organization that has been fighting to really suppress the Anglophones, getting their internet every minute. We hear slowly Camtel is uh, re-establishing the internet for some areas of uh, the Anglophone region. Interestingly, the leader of Camtel, with most of his associates, are rumored to have stolen a whole lot of money and now they are putting them in jail. So we ask ourselves, why is it so easy for people to steal money in Cameroon? It's because the system is a government of thieves for thieves and by thieves. In most countries in the world, if you're an administrator, you don't have access to money. But in Cameroon, whenever you are an administrator, they give you access to money so you can steal. Because it's a government based on patriotism of the stomach. So when you become a leader, they give you money to oil the system so that you can spend money on your friends, then buy their loyalty. So when we look at this, we just feel sorry for Cameroonians. And that's why I say this is Cameroon's Canterbury Tales. We, we laugh at what is happening. There was a guy who was very popular a few years ago, Dr. Charles Ateba Eyene. He talked a whole lot about the caricature of the people who are in Bia's government. These are people who produce nothing, they consume everything, and they don't have anything to show for it. These are people who have really lost their souls. They don't really have any conscience. They live in blood. So, we are really feeling sorry for Cameroonians, and with this show, we are really telling that there is hope. What we want to encourage you guys to do is, you are fighting and dying, and we are encouraging you to continue fighting. Because no human being, however great, can conquer the will of the people. The people are tired, the people want to be free. So no matter what Bia wants, he can send all the armies to the northwest and southwest regions, the people will be free. The people are fighting and dying. The way we see it, we're just afraid that the more this continues, more and more Cameroonians are going to start acquiring arms. When they start acquiring arms, then it will be total war in Cameroon. This is a situation we've been begging Mr. Paul Bia to change. Engage the Anglophones in peaceful dialogue. Nominating Paul Atanganji, who is your hatchet man, to go to Northwest and Southwest and kill these people is, going, is not going to solve the problem. What will solve the problem is a dialogue. Let Cameroonians all sit at the table with you and discuss peace. And this will be a good thing for the country. Learn from America. We started this show by talking about the U.S. mission to Africa. The U.S. mission to Africa is a reassertion of the American values of freedom. Let Cameroonians be free politically. Let Cameroonians be free economically. Let Cameroonians be free socially. If we do this, then we shall have peace in Africa. God bless Cameroon and God bless America and God bless the world. So my friends, I'm ending this show, but I'm asking you to subscribe to my channel. We want to get to a big number pretty soon. So go and subscribe to our channel because we want you to watch our show. Share this show with your friends. Share, share and share. God bless you.